Good morning, evening, or night, everybody. I'm Jext, and in this video, we are going to be taking an absolutely exhaustive look at the brand new Splatoon 3 Salmon Run Next Wave trailer. This will be a deep dive going into every single little detail and covering everything I could possibly find. So without further ado, let's get started. First up, we have this helicopter coming in to deliver our wonderful little inklings to the newest Salmon Run map, Sockeye Station. The helicopter itself is obviously a change from Splatoon 2 Salmon Run, in which our inklings were sort of ferried out to the each map on a boat. Um, Splatoon's new North American Twitter had this to say about the helicopter and the new perks for Salmon Run. They said, new hires are being ferried to job sites in a helicopter. We were unable to probe any of Grizzco's financial documents, but it doesn't take a scientist to determine that helicopters cost money. So this tweet and the prevalence of the helicopter do indicate that Splatoon 2 Salmon Run venture for Grizzco Industries was at least somewhat monetarily successful, meaning Mr. Grizz is definitely turning a profit and putting some of that income back into his business. This also could indicate that maybe the boat usually used to transport Inklings to Salmon Run maps is not as safe or as effective as it once was. Obviously, a helicopter can fly over water, but maybe the presence of the King Salmonid, which we will get to, makes travel by boat unsafe. A quick glance around this shot of the interior of the helicopter does show some small doodles, possibly by the Inklings or Grisco employees. They seem to show a fly fish on the right side around here and a large salmonid head with a crown on the top of the helicopter, which is most likely a doodle of the king salmonid. As we get a shot of the map itself, we can see that it is relatively small in size compared to other shots of the Splatoon 2 salmon run map reveals, and the surrounding environment seems rather industrial. The building structure on the left reminds me of a large manufacturing plant, which could just be visual flourish and environmental design, or it could be an event and factory used for some sort of packaging or manufacturing. But according to the Splatoon Twitter, it's actually an advanced salmonid base featuring a tall spiraling tower. Now, as the Inklings depart from the helicopter, we see them use a rather unique sort of squid jump animation, meaning this could be how we depart for Salmon Run shifts from now on, and could also be the same animation used in multiplayer when Inklings spawn into the map from their now newly floating spawn box. The tracking of this squid also reminds me of how spectator cam kind of works and looks. This could just be a development tool for trailers and in-game footage, but it could also mean Salmon Run has a spectator cam or some sort of replay function. In my opinion, it's more likely that it's just the development tool, though. Now, the Inklings do give us a good look at the new and improved uniforms, which the Splatoon Twitter also had images of and a description. Quote, Further proof that Grizzco is thriving, the firm has upgraded its gear. Do you know how much ink resistant suits cost? This researcher does not, but... Please let me know if you find a bargain. In any case, these Inklings look ready to take on a salmonid wave of industrial proportions. The industrial proportions line ties into the background and general theming seen so far. Maybe the salmonid invasion is tied to the salmonids trying to get revenge on Inklings for their capture, slaughter, packaging, and production of salmon. Now this is a bit of a stretch, I'm going a little game theory on this, but one of the only food items actually seen in the game not on the maps, outside of Krusty Sean's, is this singular piece of salmon in a bowl underneath Judd and Lil Judd. Could our beloved Inklings be slaughtering salmonids to feed their feline overlords? Probably not, but it would be insanely cool. Now, getting back to the uniforms, they have been upgraded from their Splatoon 2 counterparts. The Splatoon 3 iterations include a high visibility piece on the front and back, which is typical for a lot of professions where you want to locate your coworkers, like construction. The back piece actually seems to be based on a real-life high-vis piece of gear. Shoutouts to Yorozu Butsuryu for showing that off. The added headset is typical of normal aviation headsets, obviously because the Inklings are now traveling by helicopter, that is how they communicate. It could also serve as a visual representation of a newly implemented voice chat feature, but that is unlikely given Nintendo's stance on voice chat in multiplayer games, especially Splatoon. 
which they have voiced in the past. Granted, this article that's on screen now is from Splatoon 1, and Splatoon 2 did have official voice chat support, not publicly, but for specific chats using the official Nintendo Switch app and a convoluted mess of a headset, but support for that was ended in July of 2021. Other than those two changes to the uniform, the other notable one is a headlamp, which could indicate that more nighttime waves could be on the horizon or that these inklings need to be prepared for any scenario. I'm personally a fan of the new designs as it kind of fits the chaos theming that Splatoon 3 is taking on, especially since the headlamp seems to be strapped on with duct tape. We also do get a look at what seems to be the default hairstyle for the inkling we originally saw briefly in the first trailer. This style has some braided, braided tentacles on one side and a normal one on the other. This looks pretty sick, and again, the mismatched sides and lack of symmetry goes along with the chaos theme wonderfully. The inkling shots also give us a decent look at some of the main weapons. The Splattershot Roller and Charger now sport a, a yellow, orange, and purple color scheme with blue accents, countering their pink and green color scheme from Splatoon 2 and their green and orange color scheme from Splatoon 1. Blaster remains the same, however, albeit a bit shinier. Next up, we get a look at the HUD. Now, there is some good stuff to dig around here, so let's start at the top left of the screen. The font is the same, but the weapon icon and color are not. They seem to have made the squid and octopus shaped icons more blocky and uniform while going for a more vibrant orange hue. Obviously, this could change, but as it stands right now, it's kind of a downgrade for me. Splatoon 2 had the bat graphic plane in the shape of a small fry at the end, while this footage lacks any sort of flourish to it except for a seemingly random QR code hidden next to the egg tally. No one has been able to scan this QR code, and I don't really think it holds much significance at all. What is also interesting to note is that in this footage, the egg total for this wave is set at 15, as opposed to the lower difficulties in Splatoon 2, which can start as low as 4 eggs. So this could mean that the overall difficulty of Salmon Run is now higher, or that was just an arbitrary amount selected by the developers for this footage. The time limit of 100 seconds is still present, and the weapon icons seem to be of a higher quality in Splatoon 2 and slightly more 3D. They have a polished look to them that I like, but it feels like it kind of clashes with the Chaos theme. Now moving on to the bottom left, This Way and Booyah are confirmed to be back as the only two commands you can use to communicate with teammates, which is a bummer, but it could also be subject to change as none of this game footage is final. Now moving to the top right, the special gauge has undergone a slight change, and we get a look at the icon for the Crab Tank special. The special gauge is now composed of 23 segments in a three-quarter circle, similar to Splatoon 1 and 2. Also present is the two meal packets, which resemble military MREs on the helmet that represent the two uses of your respective special that can be used amongst the three waves of Salmon Run. Although in this trailer, it's not confirmed whether Salmon Run is still three waves, so that could change. It could be more or less or the same. Other than that, we do get to see that like in Splatoon 2, instead of an ink tank, the life preserver ring still represents the ink left in Salmon Run, so no change is present there. In the background, we do see this odd poster on the wall. It gives me a sort of nuclear warning or a biohazard vibe, possibly hinting at further theming for next wave or just decorative flair. Also, correct me if I'm wrong, but in the background here seems to be some slices of skewered corn? I didn't really know what the significance of this could possibly be, but after some research, I shockingly discovered that corn is regularly used as fish bait due to its cheapness, ubiquity, and availability. Shoutouts to this Finn's Fishing Tips for this article. And I was wondering what type of fish is corn regularly used to bait? Well, kokanee. And what is kokanee? Japanese salmon. Who would have thought that? Well, probably kokanee fishermen. But this is another reason why I love Splatoon. Small details like this that almost no one is really going to see or recognize, the environmental artists in the Squid Research Lab really earn their stripes, and they really do their research. Now, getting back to the main trailer, we also get a look at the Charger, which has its laser in this trailer. This could just be a Salmon Run only edition, but the other two trailers did not have a laser present for Charger when it was on screen, with one including this kind of glow effect. Maybe they are playing with how Charger visibly represents its shots, maybe not, but it's interesting to note. 
Also present are some familiar faces. Chum, Quahawk, and Small Fry are all back and ready to get slain as the usual Salmon Run enemy fodder, as well as our old friend the Steelhead. Then we get a very nice expressive face from our main inkling as the camera reveals the newest Salmonid boss, the Fish Stick. Shoutouts to Prochara for drawing the comparison between this enemy and the game mode Tower Control, as well as the next new boss Flipper Flopper, and comparing that to Splat Zones. We get a look at how to defeat this fish stick enemy by simply painting the side and shooting the small fry up top. This enemy begs the question though, does the stick disappear after the small fry are defeated? If so, when does it disappear and how does it disappear? If not, this could add some great verticality and escape options to Salmon Run. Also, the music heard at the beginning of the fish stick's introduction may seem familiar to some of you. <laughs> And that's because it is. It's the music from a pivotal cutscene in Splatoon 2's Octo Expansion. Now, this has some possibly insane lore implications. Now, the scene this song plays in is, and spoilers for Octo Expansion. If you don't want to be spoiled on it, skip ahead now. The song plays in the scene where Captain Cuttlefish and Agent 8 complete Tartar's blender and about to be smoothied, as Marina delicately puts it. Agent 3 then crashes through the ceiling and breaks them out and knocks themselves unconscious in the process. And interesting to note, though, is that Captain Cuttlefish says, Aw, oh, fish sticks, this ain't good, right after that scene takes place. What an oddly similar choice of words to this newly revealed Salmonid boss. It's probably just a coincidence. Now, what does this song mean in terms of lore? Well, it could just be a fun incorporation of a song motif, or it could directly link Commander Tartar with the Salmonid invasion and the creation of new and improved Salmonids. If you can recall, Tartar's mission in the Octo Expansion, once again spoilers for Octo Expansion, was to create a new apex species after he became disgusted with ink Inklings and Octarians. He was seemingly defeated at the end of Octo Expansion, however. This small musical motif being present could mean Tartar is alive and well, and has decided that Salmonids are the apex sentient species he desired all along, and he's using his power and technology to equip Salmonids with better weapons, armor, and possibly intelligence in order to exact his revenge on the Inklings and Octolings and Octarians who defeated him. It's just a theory, but it's a damn interesting one. We also do get a better look at our surroundings here, with a large tower in the background connected to a crane with a huge hook. This lends credence to my earlier theory that the surroundings are an abandoned factory. Maybe this large hook is what Grisco Industries intends to capture King Salmonid with, perhaps. Or it could just be how the Salmonids are moving their food sources around. Also slightly obscured by this fish stick is what seems to be large fried shrimp. And if you don't know where I'm going with this, well... What else is a great fish bait, especially for Japanese salmon? You guessed it, shrimp. I can tell this is shrimp because it is the same texture used for Krusty Sean, who is a shrimp, and the shrimp food he sells, as well as the better look we get at from this promo image on Twitter. Again, such immaculate detail put into the environmental design, I'm really loving how this is playing out. Look here and we can see some sort of decal which appears to show a salmon sort of evolving into a salmonid. I'm assuming the circle in, a, in the middle is a golden or power egg. This, to my knowledge, is the first time I've seen anything showing how salmonids maybe have come to their upright walking form from regular salmon. Very interesting indeed. In the background, I can also make out what seemed to be some sort of hot dog or sausage skewered which can also be used as fish bait, of course. A clear shot isn't really given during the trailer, but it can be seen in this promo image, as well as what seem to be french fries, which can also used to be used as fish bait. Salmon species typically are not scavengers, but it does make more sense in the context of upright walking salmonids who are hungry for anything they can get their hands on, especially during a mass migration, like, I don't know, french fries and hot dogs. The next new boss salmonid makes its appearance after a hot dog sighting though, the flipper flopper, along with how to beat it. Essentially it casts a small splat zone of its own, and the way to defeat it is relatively simple. Capture the zone, let it crash down and break off its armor, and then shoot it. 
The flipper flopper is the first salmonid that kind of actually flops around like a fish though, and it could be a more rudimentary ancient version of the salmonid lineage. Also, the back end of it reminds me of the fish tail that sticks out of grillers in Splatoon 2 Salmon Run, so maybe flipper floppers are just armored versions of the fish inside the grill? I don't know. Next up, a very crucial and super awesome addition to Salmon Run, the egg throw. Finally, we can transport eggs by air. This obviously makes Salmon Run much more dynamic, allowing players to stay in positions without having to travel back up to the basket to deposit their winnings. This does consume ink, as confirmed by the Splatoon Twitter, and can be seemingly charged, allowing you to throw an egg farther but with a heavier ink consumption penalty. This does have several implications, obviously, greatly increasing efficiency in obtaining and depositing eggs and reaching bounties, but it could also be used to troll by tossing eggs directly into the water or areas that they are unobtainable so that might be a little bit annoying in the future. Either way, it's a welcome change and that also explains the slightly different look to the net and life preserver that the eggs are carried in. As they can be thrown, the net is attached to a rod and looks a little bit more like a bucket which allows it to be flung. Now you can see throughout the trailer that the gusher spots are still present, meaning that the goldie seeking gusher waves will probably return, or some type of wave utilizing them. As well as the previous Salmon Run bosses, the fish stick and flipper flopper can be seen as well, meaning Salmon Run is going to be much more hectic and much more fun. We do get a small snippet showing a snatcher flying away with three eggs instead of its usual one, indicating that they will be way more annoying and that eggs are probably going to be in a higher supply and that we'll have to watch the skies even more during Salmon Run. Then we get a snippet which the competitive community has dissected a thousand times at this point, the double squid roll. This clip confirms several things. One, that squid rolls at this point in time do not consume ink. Two, that squid rolls can be used back to back. However, no limit has been confirmed. It could just be the two that we see, it could be three, or it could be unlimited. There is some end lag, meaning that it can be punished. Now, the armor plinking sound heard when the squid roll passes through the stinger stingray could indicate that it does have reduced damage from attacks while squid rolling, and some people think it could be an indicator of a parry mechanic, but I'm kind of skeptical of that. I think it's too early to really sell that idea, and the damage in the ink damage indicator at the bottom corners show that you still take at least some damage in squid rolls, which kind of begs the question, what good is a parry if you still take damage during it? Also in the background are what seems to be sprigs of asparagus on skewers? Again with these weird food choices. And once again, I actually found some evidence supporting the use of asparagus as fish bait. I'll quote this random article I found. Quote, it also has the ability to attract fish, according to U.S. scientist Homer Smith. He discovered that tinned asparagus was included as part of the emergency ration kit given to American pilots in the Pacific Ocean region, who were working for the U.S. spy organization called the Office of Strategic Services. The idea of pilots eating asparagus was a clever one, because those who were shot down or stranded on remote islands had a very valuable way of feeding themselves. Asparagus contains mercaptans, which are powerful chemical attractants, and when the vegetable is eaten, these chemicals pass into the urine. The pilots were told to urinate into the water so that the chemicals would spread through the water and attract fish to the area, making them much easier to catch. This was of course a valuable food source, and the smell of asparagus is present in the urine after just 15 minutes in many people, or 30 minutes at most. So, uh, that's a thing. Um, anyway, in the following shot we can see that two fish sticks are on the map, meaning that they may not actually disappear after defeating the small fry atop them, which is cool and like I said earlier means a great amount of verticality and escape options could be present in the mode now. Also, there's some sort of message on the wall on the right. I can't make out quite what it says, but this could mean that the plaza and its posts are probably returning, so that's pretty cool. We then get a look at how Killer Whale is going to look when it's fired. Two speakers at a time activate and are aimed in a certain range, similar to its Splatoon 1 counterpart and can be seen in this promotional image. 
Whether or not you can independently aim each series of two speakers is unconfirmed, and also whether you can move while it's active is also unconfirmed. But if you do look closely, after the first set of two speakers is activated, the charger does go back to a normal aiming mode as shown by the laser being seen. So this could mean that each set is activated on its own and that you have a set amount of time to use all three sets. But that's not confirmed. It's nice to just see it in action though, and it can be used to take out those pesky fly fish with ease. Then we get to see yet another special in action, the crab tank. This time we actually get to see its normal firing mode, and the prompt at the bottom shows that it can be fired using the R or the ZR button. I would wager a guess that one of them is used to fire the large, explosor like shot seen in the previous trailer, probably the R button, and that holding down ZR is used to fire it like a normal semi-automatic weapon. The tank itself fires about 10 to 11 shots and still has about 60% of its duration left, so it, it might seem like the duration is set most like inkjet or something like that, and it's not really based on its ink consumption, it's just a set duration. We then get this cool egg throwing sequence demonstrating the usefulness of this new ability and how it paints directly below your feet. You can also see here a cool hieroglyphic looking decal that displays a steel eel. We then get one more look at the squid roll which is used right after transforming into squid form, and not at max speed as some people thought before. I'm wondering though what button or buttons are going to be used to execute the squid roll. Maybe it will be similar to the dualies dodge roll where you have to hold down ZR, a direction on the left stick, and press the jump button to activate it. I'm not exactly sure, but I reckon it will be pretty intuitive. On top of that, we can also now throw eggs directly into the basket, which is nice and a great quality of life change for Salmon Run. We then get a great look at a possible new super boss. King Salmonid, as the Splatoon Twitter has officially deemed it. I would have liked Salmonzilla, but the Kaiju Godzilla resemblance is uncanny regardless. We do view this big boy in a black and white view, seemingly like an attack helicopter, so maybe there's some sort of special mode or weapon that you could use during, this, during a boss fight with this big boy where the helicopter is used. That would be pretty hype. Now going into Salmon Run lore a bit, the 17th and 18th Sunken Sea Scrolls of Splatoon 2 give some important info about this guy in Salmon Run in general. The 17th scroll reads, When smoke rises from the seven rings, the great pink fish will emerge from the sea, devouring all creatures of the land. The Book of Madai, chapter 10, verse 10. Sunken Sea Scroll number 18 reads, This appears to be a painting from the Middle Ages. It depicts a great migration of salmon said to occur once every 70 years. So this Great Migation obviously began around Splatoon 2, which is why Grizzco was hiring in Splatoon 2, and it might be coming to a head during the events of Splatoon 3, thus the emergence of the pink fish, which is, I would assume, this King Salmonid. The pink in the pink fish might reference how salmon change color when they spawn and breed, and when they breed, they return to their spawning grounds, which is relatively similar to how salmon runs sort of rush in large waves. The Book of Madai line is kind of obviously a play on a religious text of some sort. The Seven Rings are obviously a reference to Christianity and the Seven Seals of the Revelation in the Bible. If you're not the most Christian person or just not versed in Christian religion, in short, removing the Seven Seals causes increasingly apocalyptic events culminating in a grand apocalypse. So essentially the Salmonids are trying to cause an apocalypse by summoning these Seven Rings. Having the emergence of this King Salmonid kind of means they're getting close. The Book of Madai, I don't really know exactly where that name came from, but Madai may be referencing the biblical figure Madai, or just the Japanese name for Red Sea Bream, or both. So Splatoon 3 could invoke Inkling saving the world from an apocalyptic King Salmonid, who could just be a pawn for Commander Tartar. Tartar could use the strength and sheer numbers of Salmonid forces to try to overwhelm the Inklings, Octolings, and Octarians he views as disgusting and non-perfect sentient species, thus trying to wipe them from existence and complete his ultimate goal of creating a new apex species that he can pass on humanity's lessons to, using the Salmonids he might command. It's interesting to say the least, but we shall see what this mystery eventually holds. 
Anyway, the final image shows once again some duct tape covering up another small piece. I think this is just sort of a visual gag, maybe poking fun at how Chaos theme is essentially pieced together, or that Splatoon 3 is hiding things and it's only a matter of time before the tape is torn off and the truth is revealed. Who really knows? Now, this trailer had a lot going on, but it also left out quite a bit, especially for Salmon Run. We still don't know if Grillers, Fog, Tide Levels, Rush Waves, or the Mothership will return, as well as any Grizzco weapons. I would wager they all probably will in some form or another, and this trailer was just focused on the new stuff, but it'll be interesting to see how fleshed out this game mode will become in Splatoon 3. Well, I think that about wraps up all I had to say. I'd say we covered it all, but if you have any theories, thoughts, or th you think I missed something, please comment down below. Follow me on Twitter at Jex4 for more in info on my upcoming vids, wild theories, and fun Splatoon facts. And remember to obliterate that like button and demolish subscribe. I'm Jex. Have a good one.